Hi guys, so a bit of a different one today. As some of you may know, uh, my computer growing up was the Commodore 64. And I had that for about five years until I got my uh, Amiga 500 in 93. So, I had a Commodore and my friend Martin had a Spectrum. Now, I hated the Spectrum. So, I didn't like the monochrome graphics of the games. And I didn't like the fact that you had to jump through hoops just to connect a joystick to it. Like, uh, Sinclair, or Kempston, or Cursor. It's like, just, just put a joystick in it and just let me play the game. Um, why is there so many different types of joysticks? Like Commodore 64, you've got just two ports and you can plug it in either one of them and you can press fire and you're away. Anyway, fast forward 30 years and I finally bite the bullet and buy a Spectrum. Now this one had never been used. It was new old stock and I was the first person ever to use it. So the box was a bit battered but the actual computer itself was in mint condition. Um, it was still in the um, plastic bag. Uh, the plug hadn't even been wired on. It even smelt new. Now, I don't know if you uh, ever smell your consoles and computers, um, but because this was new old stock, I had to. You know that new plastic smell? Um, it had that. And I've got to admit, there are some games on the Spectrum that I prefer to the Commodore 64 counterparts. Anyway, so here are eight games that I believe are better on the Spectrum than the Commodore. So, number eight, I've chosen The Empire Strikes Back. And as you can tell, there's no in-game music on the Commodore 64 version. And the vector lines, um, the lines that make up all the sprites and what have you, are quite dull on the Commodore compared to the Spectrum. So they're, they're quite bright and vivid, uh, just like the, um, the vector graphics in the arcade game. So here's the Spectrum version, and as you can hear, there's uh, music in-game. And just like in the arcade, there's a different piece of music for each of the four segments. So you've got the Star Wars theme for level one, and uh, you've got the Imperial March on level two. Level three. I'm not sure of the uh, the title track for this one, but it's the one where the Millennium Falcon is being chased by the Tie Fighters and the Star Destroyers. And finally, on level four, you've got the music from the uh, the asteroid field. And as you can see at the top there, you've got some uh, text showing what C-3PO is saying and uh, Han Solo. So the Spectrum version of Empire Strikes Back is closer to the arcade than any of the uh, other formats. So number seven is Navy Seals. 
And I think the only reason why I think this is better on the uh, Spectrum is it just plays better. And now I know you've got the, uh, the, the, the colour on the Commodore 64 uh, versus the monochrome on the Spectrum. I think the, uh, the sprites are better animated on the Spectrum. And of course the other difference between uh, this and the Commodore version is uh, there's no music. And I think the Spectrum version is the uh, only version of Navy Seals where you can actually load the last level uh, because it's the only um, version of the game that's on uh, audio cassette. So you can either load the main game and start from level one or you can turn the tape over and load the last level. So like I said this is the only version on cassette tape uh, all the other versions uh, were, were either on disc or cartridge so you had the, the Commodore 64 on the, on the cartridge the Amstrad version uh, was for the GX4000 uh, and of course the Amiga and Atari ST were on floppy disks. So number six is WEC Limons, and uh, as you can see, it's very basic. There's uh, not much uh, scenery at the side of the road. Just a couple of lamp posts, and later on, you get a few trees. Um, and the steering is very, very sensitive. Uh, I mean, you just, you just you just need to tap left or right, and you go all over the road. Um, and the the main reason uh, I prefer the Spectrum game is because on the Commodore, you, you don't know what gear you're in. There's no like indicator anywhere on the screen. And uh, as you'll see with the Spectrum version, there's like a little uh, gear shift in the bottom left corner. So here's the Spectrum version, and as you can see there's the Konami logo at the side of the road, there's like a sponsor thing, you've got a lot of signs there, arrows, trees, and uh, like I said the gear stick in the bottom left corner, I'm not entirely sure what that is in the bottom right corner, um, it's just sort of like a little indicator. I think it's uh, how much you're steering left and right. And yeah, the, the game plays a hell of a lot better than the Commodore version and looks so much better as well. So there we are, that's WEC Le Mans and uh, those are the reasons why I think it's better on the Spectrum than the Commodore. So number five is Shadow Warriors, also known as Ninja Gaiden. And I had this 30 odd years ago and I didn't really like it. Uh, I don't think uh, I even liked it in the arcade. It was just very um, sluggish, the controls, and very slow, not very fast paced. And the hit detection on the, uh, the enemies is virtually non-existent so yeah I wasn't really a fan of this game and here is Shadow Warriors on the spectrum so much bigger sprites and it seems a hell of a lot faster and is so much more playable so when I first loaded this up, I was so impressed at this for a Spectrum game. 
And on the Commodore 64 and um, the arcade, I think I can get up to sort of halfway through the second level. Um, when I played this, I managed to get to level three, which I've never actually got to um, on this game before. Uh, and if you look at the colours, it's it's very colourful for a Spectrum game. It's not just like uh, black and white or black and yellow. Uh, they've actually made the effort and uh, coloured in the backgrounds and the um, the outfits. I mean, I know, I know it's a small playing window because you've got the massive uh, heads-up display at the top there. But, um, yeah, it's so much more playable than the Commodore 64. And I'd even go as far to say... It plays better than the original arcade game. And the number four spot goes to Target Renegade. Now this is one of the games that me and my friend Martin used to play on his Spectrum. And the Commodore 64 version is only a one player game which is bizarre because it's got two ports and uh, there are other two player games on the Commodore so I've no idea why they chose not to make it a two player game whereas on the Spectrum and the Amstrad it's a two player game so me and my friend uh, we used to play this on his Spectrum I'd have the joystick and he used to uh, play with keyboard because he was, he was used to playing um, games on a keyboard. And like a lot of the other games in this list, um, this is a lot more playable than on the Commodore 64. I mean, the sprites are uh, probably about the same size as the Commodore version. So uh, there's, there is a bit of colour in this game. So you've got like, the blue um, gaps in the in the background where the uh, cars are. And then you've got the uh, the blue and red graffiti on the walls. And it's also nice to see, uh, like on the Commodore, the Spectrum has in-game music. So that's always a bonus. So number three is Batman the Movie, and I played this a hell of a lot back in the day. And uh, on the Commodore 64, um, if you look at the Batman sprite, how detailed it is. Uh, a lot of uh, work has gone into uh, creating that sprite. But if you look at the bad guys, not much work has gone into making those. They're just like uh, blocky messes. And you've got the guys running backwards and forwards um, aimlessly and uh, they're just like shooting for no reason. And then you've got the uh, the guys lobbing the grenades who are just like pinned to the spot and just constantly throw grenades. And then when we go to the Spectrum version, the bad guys are actively looking for you. So they'll uh, climb down the ladder and then climb back up again. And uh, you can go up and down, up and down. I could do this all day. And the guy, the bad guys will follow you no matter what. Uh, and even the guys with the grenades uh, are, are pacing up and down as well. And uh, they only throw grenades if you get near them. And another good thing about the Spectrum version is the uh, Batwing level. Because on this and the Amstrad... Not only have you got to free the balloons, at various points throughout the level, you've got the Joker's helicopters to contend with as well. So Robocop just missed out on the uh, number one spot. 
and as you can see on the Commodore 64 version, Robocop can jump. Now I know he can jump in the uh, the arcade game, but on the Spectrum and Amstrad versions, uh, he doesn't jump, and there's no reason for him to jump. Now, as you can see, uh, there's just a power bar at the top of the screen on the Commodore. Uh, on the Spectrum, uh, you've got three lives. And if you die, you go back to the start of the, uh, the level that you're currently on. Now, the, uh, the sprite of Robocop there is uh, it's, it's not too bad. It's quite small compared to the, uh, the Spectrum. But again, um, the Spectrum plays a lot better. And it's the only version of Robocop on the uh, home computers that I've actually completed. Now the Commodore 64 version of Robocop was uh, unfinished. Uh, some of you may know this. Uh, so on the warehouse level, which is, I think it's level 4, I think, 4 or 5. Um, it doesn't give you enough time to complete the level. But there is a glitch where you can actually walk through a wall um, therefore giving you more time to uh, get to the end of the level so when you do get to the end of the warehouse level uh, the next level is uh, unfinished it's just like a just a, a pixelated mess like just one big glitch Now another good thing about the Spectrum version um, and the Amstrad version, uh, you've got those um, four different types of uh, weapons in the bottom left corner. So it actually tells you what gun you're carrying at the moment and uh, how many bullets are left. So if you run out of your bullets, you have to resort to uh, using your fists to punch your enemies. So that was Robocop, and that was number two. Robocop. So the number one game that I believe is better on the Spectrum than the Commodore 64 is of course Chase HQ. Now I got this uh, for Christmas 1989 and I thought it was a complete joke. In fact I'm still waiting for the punchline. So if you look at the background it's uh, like monochrome as though it's like a Spectrum port uh, and the only colour you've got is the uh, the, the heads up display and the um, the car itself and the um, the red and blue light at the top uh, and it is slow I mean all other versions of Chase HQ have a sense of speed um, this one's just horrendously slow the sound effects are awful I mean it's just horrendous I mean I've no idea what Ocean was thinking when they did this version the, uh, the Spectrum version and the Amstrad version are, are great. The, the Amiga version is, you know, similar to the arcade. I've not played the ST version, uh, but I'm sure it's better than this. Anyway, let's take a look at the Spectrum version. Now right off the bat you can see uh, this is leaps and bounds better than the Commodore 64 version just because of those little animations of the uh, Chase HQ letters just like in the arcade. So all the, uh, the little animations of the, uh, the dots in between the H and Q just bouncing around. Really well done. Hold 
on, man. And you'll notice there's uh, a lot of uh, digitized speech and sound effects from the arcade. So uh, in the arcade, when you put your, um, your your coin in, it makes that little sound effect um, that the Spectrum does when you press fire to start the game. And it's got a nice range of uh, digitized speech as well, like "Let's go, Mr. Driver." And I think the only uh, time you hear Nancy speak is uh, when your time's up. Because she says, Your time's up! But yeah, you can see straight away uh, how much better this game is compared to the uh, Commodore 64. So much faster. So much more playable. I would happily play this any day over the Commodore 64 version. Even on the back cover of the uh, Pit Squad version of Chase HQ, it just has screenshots from the Spectrum. Whereas normally you'd have um, screenshots from Spectrum, Commodore and Amstrad. They just chose to put the best version on the back. So that was the uh, eight Spectrum games that I think are better than the Commodore 64 versions. So what do you think? Is there any other games I should have uh, added to the list? I know um, Old Style Gaming said Enjoy Roll Racer and Super Hang On. I do agree with him, but I didn't want to add them to the list because I didn't have those games back in the day on the Commodore 64. So I wanted to choose games that I knew and loved on the Commodore 64 like 30 years ago that I think are better on the Spectrum today, if that makes sense. Anyway, I might do another video after I've discovered some more Spectrum games that are better than the Commodore versions. So anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye.